Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels. We're a little uh, discombobulated this morning. <laughs> I had to go out and strip the mini stall and one of the dogs had diarrhea in the basement. And You know, a typical morning. <laughs> you know, the biggest problem with having nine dogs is you never know who's the guilty party. Uh, it's really frustrating. Pretty sure it's still Millie. I think she's got something going on and she only eats rabbit, so I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. So, the good news is I started a new medicine for Scout's ears, medicine number 222, and um, he's not smelling as bad and not draining as much, and I, I, I have hope. I have hope, um, but he does have an appointment with the surgeon on March 8th, so, <laughs> hey, Michelle, <laughs> um, I can see you are on now, but still can't tune in. I have no idea why. Refresh the page. I, some people have trouble with that, too, and um, a lot of people were saying that it had to do with their settings. When they um, looked at their settings on their phone or their tablet or their computer, that was why they couldn't get it to come up live for them first thing, so... Um, check your settings I and I can't tell you what the um, problems were that they were having or how to fix it because I'm not that smart um, and obviously we still haven't fixed our microphone problem so I have to put a phone call into my son my coffee mug Tara we have the set of four um, came from a little shop up in um, Provincetown and uh, on the Cape uh, off Massachusetts my sister found them they're handmade by somebody Anyway, um, rabbit poop is a delicacy. Yeah, sure it is. Um, we don't have any rabbits in our yard. When you have nine dogs and four cats, you don't have rabbits or squirrels or anything else. So, um, not a problem. Uh, Cheyenne says, settings worked for me and refresh. Yeah, so something with your settings and then refreshing everything, then uh, somehow that makes it work better. Anyway, uh, cut to the chase. I want to talk about seizures today. I'm sorry, I haven't had coffee other than the two sips I've taken since we've been live. Okay, so lots and lots and lots of problems with seizures. There is a chapter in my book on seizures. Um, from a Chinese medicine standpoint, seizures are a form of wind. And um, so if you think of shaking, that's like the leaves in the trees that shake. So it's uh, really a problem of spring. Spring is ruled by the liver and the gallbladder to a lesser extent. So when we think of seizures, we always want to look to the liver and see is the liver balanced. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, good morning Diane, I think that's one of the reasons why we see so many animals have seizures after they're given chemicals. Um, can you tilt that light up just a little? Um, after they're given chemicals like Brevecto, Nexgar, Semperica, thank you, um, Advantix, uh, which has permethrin, um, those chemicals have to be detoxed by the liver and when the liver is angry we can get seizures um, those chemicals can also affect the neurologic system directly and affect the nerves um, the way that a lot of those chemicals work is that they interfere with nerve transmission um, along the nerve endings uh, using something called the GABA receptors which um, works uh, it's a slightly different system in insects and ticks than it is in mammals. Um, and so they tend to be much more sensitive to the chemicals and the interruption in the nerve signals, and that's why they die. So the whole purpose of those uh, flea and tick chemicals is to kill the flea or tick without killing the dog or cat. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. Um, and some animals are much more sensitive and susceptible, for instance, with um, the ivermectin, milbamycin, the, uh, the heartworm preventatives. Uh, there are uh, a certain subset of dogs, the collies and shelties, um, but they're really dogs with a gene mutation called the white-footed gene. Um, and so those dogs are much more susceptible to the neurologic effects of those chemicals, and that's why we can see uh, side effects much more commonly in those breeds, and overdoses are a much bigger problem for those breeds. So seizures can be caused definitely by chemicals that we give to our pets. Um, they can be caused by toxins and chemicals that they might be exposed to in the environment or in our home if they get into cleaning supplies or uh, you know, food that could be spoiled and have toxins in it. So, hi from South Africa. I saw my Australian friends were on too, so thanks. Um, 
so definitely chemicals can contribute to seizures if your dog or cat has a history of seizures you absolutely want to avoid those chemicals uh, somebody sent me an email the other day and their young dog had started having seizures and then having clusters of seizures so the person was good and started journaling you know what they fed what the dog did what was different each time and the person put two and two together that every time they gave their next guard tablet the dog would have severe seizures for a couple of days so luckily that person made the connection however we could have you know um, almost predicted that and warned and I have warned against it many times so I'm just going to continue to warn against using these chemicals because they're such a problem okay so uh, my girl had seizures during her last days of congestive heart failure what could have caused this so a lot of things can cause seizures um, you know she could have been having seizures just because she wasn't getting enough oxygen to the brain uh, we just had a dog at monkey's house that was having um, out of the blue, out of nowhere, started having seizures, Lady G. And um, when we did blood work, we found that she was in the final stages of kidney failure. And when they're in the final stages of kidney failure, because the ammonia levels will get high, that can cause seizures. Um, sometimes you'll start to notice it as twitching, you know, little muscle twitches or trembling. Um, and I'm not talking the old dog leg tremble, I'm talking, you know, jerky twitching. Um, and that can be seen in the final stages of kidney failure. We can also see seizures secondary to um, liver shunts, so portosystemic shunts, where uh, basically, and this is very, very common in Yorkies, Maltese, the little tiny dogs, but we can see it really in just about any breed. Um, but yeah, that's Shana. <laughs> We're here, the black one. <laughs> Snore away. North Wales, hi guys. Um, underactive thyroid can cause seizures. That's another cause. We have a boxer that comes to our clinic that a uh, young dog started having seizures. We checked the thyroid level was low, which is a little bit unusual in a, in a dog that's only 18 or 24 months old. Um, as soon as we started treating the thyroid condition, the seizures went away. So um, many, many, many causes of seizures. So if your pet has a seizure, the first thing you want to do is, you know, kind of think back and say, what did I do differently? Did I give a chemical? Did my pet have an exposure to anything? Did I just give a heartworm pill? Um, what could I have done differently in my dog's environment or with my dog's food that might have caused a problem? For instance, the, the Avengers recall, those dogs had pentobarbital, you know, seizures, stupor, um, neurologic problems and that was related to food. Most people wouldn't think to look at the food as the problem. Um, so we always want to do lab work. So if your pet has a seizure, think about what might have been different and then get your pet to the veterinarian. You don't have to do it right at the time that the seizure happens, but within 24 hours, you really want to get them in. If they go into a seizure and they don't come out of it within a few minutes, then you should go to an emergency service. You should have them seen right away. Um, seizures are um, not generally deadly. However, if your pet goes into a seizure and they have a lot of shaking motion and they don't come out of it with a few minutes, it will drive their body temperature up very high, which basically can cook their brain. So um, seizures definitely can kill them. They have a hard time breathing during the seizures. Don't stick your fingers in their mouths. Um, so, uh, you know, if they're having a seizure that they're not coming out of, yes, you should get to uh, an emergency service. One of the things that we have found, and we have no idea why this works, other than low blood sugar can cause seizures. So diabetics who get too much insulin, dogs with hypoglycemia for whatever reason, you know, whether they've been overactive and haven't eaten for a while, or they've had vomiting and diarrhea and they're not eating, um, uh, problems with electrolytes so if their potassium gets really high or really low uh, sodium chloride uh, really out of whack those can cause seizures as well so one of the things that we have tried when pets are having seizures is giving them for some reason Haagen-Dazs ice cream works really well and so anybody with seizure pets will tend to keep Haagen-Dazs vanilla ice cream in their freezer a fingerful of that smeared on the gums the sugar will absorb um, you could use caro syrup, you could use maple syrup, whatever you have, but sometimes giving them that little sugar buzz, uh, don't stick your finger in the mouth, just lift the lip, get it on the gums. Uh, sometimes that's enough to kind of bring them out of it. 
Um, you just want to soothe the pet. You don't want to be running around screaming because that's just going to cause more excitement. You want to be very soothing. You can try to uh, wrap the, or bundle the dog so that they're not thrashing as violently. Make sure that they're not going to hit their head on a, a table or a chair or a wall. Make sure they're not going to fall downstairs or off furniture. You basically need to be their support team until they come out of it. Some dogs or cats will get aggressive surrounding seizures. Um, they're very confused. They, some of them will lose their vision temporarily, some of them will lose their hearing temporarily, some of them will go into a manic stage. So um, you definitely want to keep yourself safe. Don't get bitten. Some dogs, you know, if, if your dog is really looking manic and aggressive, put them in a safe room, close the door, stay on the other side of the door, try to keep an eye on them if you can, but don't put yourself in a dangerous position. So once you can get the dog or your cat to the veterinarian, you definitely want to have a complete panel of blood work. So that's going to be a CBC, which is a complete blood count that gives us our red and white blood cells and platelets. We want to um, have a chemistry screen, a complete chemistry screen done that's going to look at the pancreas and the blood sugar and the um, kidneys and the liver and muscle enzymes, the electrolytes, all of that stuff needs to be included in the blood panel. Get a thyroid level done have a urinalysis done. Sometimes with dogs that are in kidney failure, the blood tests will look pretty normal, but the urinalysis will give you the information. The urinalysis can also give you information that maybe they've got an overwhelming infection in the bladder or in the kidneys that could be contributing to the problem. So all of that needs to be looked at. Now, I will tell you that nine times out of 10, our lab work comes back perfectly normal. Yay, that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, it rules out a lot of things. So, you know, having things ruled out is good, but you may also see something that isn't skyrocketing. You know, your veterinarian may not be that concerned, but it might be just enough for you to say, you know, that's not normal. And I had normal lab work done a while ago. And so there's a change from then until now. Um, and that's not normal for my particular pet. So, um, yeah, I know, this. Is, I put Shayna up here and then I've got two snorers. Actually, I think that's Charlie making that noise now. So the lab work becomes very important. Get a full physical done, have them listen to the heart. See if there are any heart arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, um, you know, anything that might be going on there. Maybe you need to get an EKG. If there's something abnormal, then you should go on to the echocardiogram. If everything checks out normal, you've got normal lab work, you've got normal um, heart, you've got normal physical exam, and if your dog is one of the breeds that is genetically prone to seizures, you might just have idiopathic epilepsy. Idiopathic, anytime we hear something that starts with idio, it means we're idiots and we don't know what's causing it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how we remember that one. Um, so idiopathic epilepsy, it could be genetic. So there are certain breeds that are definitely prone to uh, seizures from a genetic standpoint. Uh, pointers, German short hair pointers, Labrador retrievers for sure. Dogs with hydrocephalus. So sometimes we see hydrocephalus in Cavaliers. It's the dogs with the domed head. So uh, Chihuahuas, Yorkies, Maltese, uh, Brussels Griffon, Pugs, Bostons, and a little bit less so the Cavaliers. But those dogs are definitely prone to hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus will make them more prone to having seizures. So what do you do if your pet is having seizures? Well, on the first seizure, you get the workup done and then you don't go crazy. Um, it might be a one-off. It might be a one-time deal. Um, if your pet is a senior um, and is suddenly having seizures and all the lab work is normal, yeah, there's a chance we could have a brain tumor somewhere. Um, we're seeing them more and more often, which is a little bit scary. Um, the only way to diagnose that is with a CT scan or MRI. Um, so, uh, you know, not everybody wants to do that with their 15-year-old dogs. I get it. Um, but if you really want to be complete and you want to know what's going on, sometimes that's, that's where you need to go with this. Um, even in a young dog, we do, you know, we've seen the occasional brain tumor in a very young dog, and it, it's, it's scary. Um, other things that I've seen cause seizures, Lyme disease. 
some of those tick-borne diseases, any kind of encephalitis, and certainly rabies would cause seizures. Um, thank goodness we don't see it very often in this country, but in other countries it's a huge problem. So, um, you know, once you have all of that looked at, then you need to decide, does my pet need to be medicated for seizures? What can I do to help them not have seizures in the future? There are a ton of things that we can do from an alternative perspective, and then there are a ton of things we can do from a medical standpoint. So if your pet is having, my general rule of thumb is if they're having seizures less than once a month, and the seizures are fairly mild, meaning they only last for a minute or two, and they're not having clusters where it's one after another after another. So if you just get a mild seizure less than once a month, I usually don't recommend medicating um, with drugs because phenobarbital, zonisamide, um, oh, there's a million of them out there now, um, they, uh, potassium bromide, they all have side effects. They all have to be detoxed through the liver. They can cause um, lethargy, obesity, uh, liver disease, uh, kidney disease. So tons and tons of problems we can have with the drugs. So we only wanna use them if we really need them. Um, so from an alternative medicine standpoint, we can do acupuncture. Acupuncture is actually pretty darn effective for seizures. Definitely we could do diet changes. We need to support the liver. We need to support the marrow system, which is ruled by the kidneys, because the marrow system includes the nerves, the spinal cord, and the brain. So we, um, we really want to support both the kidneys and the liver. Liver, remember, is the organ of spring, which is green. That means the liver likes those dark green leafy things, so the kale, the spinach, the um, collards, the dandelion greens, which are nice and draining. And then we also want to uh, make sure that our liver blood is good, so we're gonna use some blood tonics like eggs, sardines, um, <clears throat> and then we have to make sure that the blood is moving so that we don't get what we call liver chi stagnation, which is all of that energy just getting stuck right here. And when it gets stuck there, then it rises up and affects the brain and causes a shen disturbance. So we want to make sure that things are moving as well. So that's our chi tonics, like the ginger, um, uh, carrots. So those are the kind of things that are gonna keep things moving. I like to use radishes, I like to use turnips. So all those kind of things um, are going to help keep the liver happier. The sardines and eggs are going to help keep the kidneys happy. Um, so all of those things can help support. We do use a ton of Chinese herbals as well. I have one patient who is a search and rescue dog. He's a border collie. He's had seizures for a number of years and we have not had to put him on any medications because that would limit his ability to be a search and rescue dog. So we've been uh, very fortunate. He's responded wonderfully to acupuncture, um, herbs, and he's on a raw diet. And the owner, um, he's had the seizures long enough now and she's documented them really well. So we know which seasons are actually the worst for this dog. Normally we think of spring being the worst, and in this dog's case, he's actually worse in the fall. Um, so we just step up his acupuncture. We have him come a little bit more often during that time period. And so she, she can almost predict, you know, okay, this time of the year, he's gonna have seizures about every six weeks. That means I need to get my acupuncture every five. And so we try to lengthen that. And during the time of the year where he might have them every four, then she might come for acupuncture every three. And we change up his herbs accordingly. So there are a ton of things that you can do to support your pets with seizures and hopefully prevent them from having more seizures down the line. Um, there is a chapter in my first book, the From Needle to Natural, about seizures and supporting the liver um, and helping uh, you know keep them healthier with that. So um, if you need more information, you can get that. Dogs with seizures, be very, very careful with vaccinations. I like these guys to be vaccine light or no vaccines, um, which is really my preference. Anything that we do that can set off the neurologic system, particularly the rabies vaccines, gotta be really careful with those guys. So if you're in a state where you can get an exemption and your dog lives in a safe area um, where he's not going to have exposure, then um, I would uh, you know, try to get an exemption. 
All right, had a lab that had seizures, lived to be 16 years old, took them off all meds at nine because of liver issues. Yeah, there are a lot of times we have to take them off, off the medications because of their liver. And, um, you know, some of them can do well. You just, you have to find um, what keeps them, them going and keeps them comfortable. Diet plays a big role in it. Uh, make sure you're feeding food that is really clean, not food with pentobarbital, not food with aflatoxins because that affects the liver. Aflatoxins are high in grains, so avoid those foods that could possibly be contaminated. So, all right, hopefully that gives you some information to work with. And uh, another busy day. I, I only got about half done what I wanted yesterday. Kind of typical, but that's okay. Got about 10 hours in the office today. We'll be hopping and bopping as usual. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow, same time. I don't know what our topic's going to be, but tune in and we'll find out. Bye-bye.